A man is a wolf rather than a man to another man when he hasn't yet found out what he's like. Plautus, asinaria. Hello, everyone. I want to congratulate you for making it this far in the course. If you have been with us since the beginning of part one, you have watched nearly 140 videos in which we have accompanied Don Quixote in his journey as a knight errant. As you can see, there has been an evolution in the form of our course, and I hope as well an evolution in each of you. You will also have noticed a similar evolution in our story, which has become more dark, and in which we see that Don Quixote is now far more conscious of the world around him. In the 1615 novel, he is no longer the same madman that we saw in the first pages of the novel of 1605. With this video, we begin San Martin de Tours. That is the second module of part two of our course, Discover Don Quixote de la Mancha. Let's begin. Chapter 24 begins with another series of narrative frames supposedly involved in the writing of Don Quixote. The narrator tells us that the translator tells us that Cidia Amete Benengeli, the original author, tells us, all in a handwritten note in the margin of the previous chapter, that he does not believe that Don Quixote could have experienced what he claims. So we have Don Quixote's report of what he saw in the cave of Montesinos, which is reported by Benengeli, all of which is then translated and retold to us by the narrator. And then we have Benengeli's doubts in the margin. At the same time, however, Benengeli does not believe that Don Quixote would lie. For me to think that Don Quixote would lie, he being the truest Hidalgo and the noblest knight of his times, is impossible. For he would not tell a lie even if they shot him through with arrows. Indeed, it looks as if Don Quixote would rather be killed like Saint Sebastian than tell a lie. Now, Berengeli, just like Cervantes in the prologue to part one, leaves everything up to the reader. You, reader, since you are prudent, judge for yourself. To top things off, Berengeli says that other unnamed witnesses claim that Don Quixote retracted the whole story on his deathbed. It is held to be certain that at the time of his death and passing, they say that he retracted all this and said that he had made it all up because it seemed to him that it was consonant and in accord with what he had read in his histories. Good Lord, now we have no way to tell if Don Quixote is crazy or simply pretending. Did you know, according to legend, Saint Sebastian survived his execution by arrows only then to succumb to a whipping. Moving on, the narrator tells us now that the cousin is shocked by Sancho's challenge of his master's authority. Notice how authority is subverted, both the narrative authority that a writer has over his reader and the social authority that a feudal lord has over his servant. But the cousin chooses to thank Don Quixote for the day's adventure, giving four reasons. First, for having had the pleasure of knowing Don Quixote himself. Second, for now having material for his Spanish Ovid. Third, for having learned that playing cards dates at least from the time of Charlemagne, according to Durandate's use of the phrase, shut up and deal, information the cousin will include in his supplement to Polydor Virgil. And fourth, for now knowing the true origin of the Guadiana River. After the cousin's speech, Don Quixote makes a cynical observation about how hard it is to find princes who appreciate good authors. Many critics read this as Cervantes' own complaint. Quixotic mission. What phrase uttered by Durandarte indicates to the cousin that people played cards during the time of Charlemagne? A. Courage and bet. B. Relax and cut the deck. C. Shut up and shuffle. Correct answer, C. Shut up and shuffle. The rest of the chapter is an allegorical transition, this time between the Cave of Montesinos of chapter 23 and Master Pedro's puppet show in chapters 25 and 26. First, Don Quixote, Sancho, and the cousin head to a nearby hermitage. 
which the cousin claims can lodge them for the night. This leads to a confusing moral disquisition by Don Quixote, who is mildly critical of modern hermits, observing that their penances are not as strict as those of the past. He concludes, however, with cynical approval. The hypocrite who pretends to be good does less harm than the public sinner. Notice how this is similar to his previous praise for unfaithful wives who manage to keep their affairs private. Part two of the novel is darker in almost all respects. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating novel. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.